I'm Suzanne Malvo. at 7 o'clock on the East Coast, 4 o'clock on the West. Thanks for starting your morning with us. And today is the one-year anniversary since Mohamed Morsi became president in Egypt. And thousands of protesters are packing the streets demanding him to step down. The scene in Cairo resembles the anti-government protests two years ago that toppled the Mubarak regime. Some protests have been violent. Several people are already dead. Others are loud and passionate with pro-government supporters on one side. On the other side, people demanding that President Morrissey be impeached. CNN's Reza Saya, he's at the Presidential Palace. We've got Ben Wiedemann in Tahir Square. Uh, ben, let's start off with you. Um, what does it look like today? Do we think it's going to get violent? Well, certainly that's the expectation, and the uh, media here in Egypt has been stoking uh, the idea that things are going to get out of control. Now, the opponents of President Mohamed Morsi are saying this is going to be the second revolution, the continuation of the revolution that began on the 25th of January 2011. But there are many things that are different. Uh, you have President Mohamed Morsi, who was elected fair and square in an election a year ago, the first free and uh, unfettered election in Egypt for a president in the country's very long history. Now, his supporters will say he was elected fair and square, and therefore he should be entitled to carry out uh, his mandate. He does have quite a lot of challenges. The country he took over a year ago, uh, the economy was in free fall. Uh, there was extreme instability following the revolution and he's been grappling with trying to run uh, a state a government a bureaucracy uh, that in many ways remains loyal to the old regime at the same time many Egyptians will tell you uh, that there are long gas lines regular power cuts there's no law and order the economy is in free fall and they feel that uh, President Mohamed Morsi has simply failed they don't want to impeach him they want him to, to go right now without any of the the window dressing of constitutionality they are calling for him to step down immediately all right Ben let's go ahead and check in with Reza Saya at the presidential palace Reza what's going on there all you have to do Allison is step outside here where we are and you can feel the buildup you can feel something's coming we're not sure what that is going to be what the outcome is going to be and what it's going to mean for the future of this young democracy and the Arab Spring for that matter but the anticipation is building this is going to be one of the focal points the presidential palace where mass demonstrations are scheduled in the coming hours I'm going to briefly step outside of the shot to show you what things look like at this hour we're going to zoom in into your left Left is the presidential palace. What you see is a few hundred protesters who have gathered. Some of them have set up tents. And you also see a very lengthy concrete barrier in front of the palace that's designed to be a buffer zone between the protesters and the palace. What you don't see is security guards. And that apparently means that if the protesters at some point wanted to get at the palace, they probably will be able to if nothing changes. This mass demonstration is part of a campaign that started with a petition drive three months ago. Organizers of that petition drive claim that they've gathered 22 million signatures calling for new elections, calling for President Morsi to leave. Essentially, they're saying more people want you out than they want you in. The concern is a short drive away from here are the supporters of President Morsi, and that sets the stage for a potential showdown where you have on one side the president, his Islamist supporters, on the other side the liberals, the moderates who want him out right now, and all eyes on to see what happens today. All right, absolutely. Reza Saya, Ben Wiedemann, thank you. I, I used to live in Cairo and to see Tahir Square, I know it well. That is jam-packed with people there. That is really going to be heating up. We will keep, we will keep track of it, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Vice President Joe Biden making an appeal to Ecuador. He wants Ecuador to reject NSA leaker Edward Snowden's request for asylum.